Hey everybody. Hey. Uh, Adam Sadler here. And I am Brady Sadler. We're here uh, with you for an introduction to Blacklist Games, even though many of you probably are familiar with us if you're here. Um, we also hope you guys are having a great uh, Gen Con online, first one ever for all of us. Um, it's very different. It's, uh, it's comfortable, but it's also really weird to not be at a convention, seeing everybody. Um, it's an adjustment, so... <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully the only one for a while. So hopefully, we're back next year normally. We're gonna try to keep up with comments as well. So if you guys have questions for us about who we are, what we've done, uh, we're more than happy to answer them. But we're also gonna kind of cover that ourselves. Um, yeah. So I'm kind of monitoring comments. So I'm not like you know, I'm not trying to shift my attention, but I'm just trying to see if you guys are talking at all while we're while we're talking. So, so, a little overview. Who, who are we? Blacklist Games. So if you're not familiar with us, um, we're board game publisher. Um, Brady and I used to work uh, back at fan uh, back in the day. We worked at Fantasy Flight Games as a, I think Brady was a developer. I was a managing game designer. Worked on things like Descent Second Edition. Um, Brady worked on like Years of War, Mansions of Madness, things like that. Um, after we left FFG, we became freelancers. We did a Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game, Walking Dead, some other stuff. Um, and then we were hired to do Street Masters. That, that was Blacklist Games' first product, um, and that's kind of what got us started with the company, kind of developed our relationship with them, um, which uh, was very successful when it came out. We were very happy with it. Um, it's still going strong today. We actually just released an app for it, which we'll talk about later, um, that's available today for iOS and Android. So that's really exciting. Um, then we, we, we uh, did Brook City, which was a follow-up game to Street Masters, and it used what we call the modular deck system, which we're going to go into depth later. Do you want any questions while we're doing we, this? Yeah, we can interrupt me with questions. There was a couple well. questions. One was how long we're streaming. Uh, I'd say at least 30 minutes. Um, Maybe an hour, hour, ho yeah. hopefully hour tops. Who, who, we want to answer questions, so however long people ask questions, we'll be around. Um, also, the other question was, um, were there any expansions planned for Heroes of Terranoth? Uh, there were. Um, we had plenty By of us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, it's, it's mostly um, uh, that, I think that title was more of a victim of the timing on both the licensing for Warhammer Quest, but also with Terranoth because of the acquisition with uh, the merger with uh, Asmodee and everything. So a lot of things shifted around the timeline. Things kind of fell off. Um, there were some planned, but um, it's, it seems like it's you know falling in the back end of things right now. So we're actually we're trying to do something with that that concept of that game because we like it. People people enjoy it. There's a fan base for it. So um, I yes, think that was we we do like the game system. We want to do something with it in the future for sure. And then uh, Baz here asks, uh, can we have another Street Masters expansion? As if they don't have enough already. <laughs> uh, we do have we do have some plans for Street Masters, but we also have other plans. Um, we're going to be talking about the future of Blacklist Games on Saturday, so join us on Saturday Sunday. for some juicy details what we're working on in the future. Anyway, so back to Brook City. Yeah, Brook City was our follow up to Street Masters, and it also used what we call the modular deck system, which, like I said, we're going to go into depth about what that means um, on this stream. Um, it's a action cop themed uh, game where you're going driving the streets, busting up crimes. Mostly to... inspired in on action movies like yeah. of that genre. So it's not a real life police simulation. It's more of the, just that. It's over the top, yeah. crazy action stuff. Yep. Um, and then after that, we went back to Street Masters and we did the Aftershock expansion, which was a bit, uh, one of our bigger Kickstarters at the time, the well, biggest at the time. Um, massive uh, collector's box expansion. There's lots of more boxes for Street Masters. We just couldn't fit it on the table. But these are just the two ones we chose to represent that product line. Um, but I guess I didn't really explain what Street Masters was. It's a cooperative um, martial arts themed uh, board game where you're. It's, it was it was a mashup of the um, just the 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 fighting genre like Street uh, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat, that fighting genre mashed up with just beat em ups like Double Dragon, Streets of Rage. Um, we wanted to capture the aesthetics and combine them with with the whole you know punch kick grapple aspect of these uh, beat em up games so it's kind of our love letter to that genre but it's not a simulation of a video game where you're just button mashing it's more of a strategic card driven game with in, in that in that setting so yes and then um again that uses the module deck system kind of uh group different unique decks mix and match different ways every hero is there every fighter has their own deck every enemy has their own deck and every stage has their own deck and you mix and match those however you want to kind of make your own games. Uh, Brook City had the same thing with cop decks, case decks, and criminal decks. And then after Aftershock, we moved over to Alter Quest, which was our um, actually getting ready to deliver. It's um, it's getting palletized at the factory, getting ready to go out to the, the hubs for a delivery. 
So it's very close. Um, it's very exciting. Um, we, did, we have a playthrough up um, on our YouTube channel if you want to check it out. We did a live play last week or I think it was a week ago. Yeah, I think it was. Um, yeah. We barely won the escape quest. Um, it is a fantasy dungeon crawling board game also using the, modu the modular deck system where you have hero decks, uh, villain decks, threat decks, and quest decks. There's campaign play. Um, there's also story story mode, which is ca campaign play and story mode are very similar. Um, it is uh, tons of miniatures, tons of stretch goals unlocked. It was, it was a really big Kickstarter. Um, and then that led us to uh, Hour, of Need. Hour of Need, which we don't have the box for. Um, but someone actually just asked what the status of Hour of Need is. That one is moving, moving along well. Obviously, things got delayed this year because of, you know, COVID and everything, um, but it's in the later stages of development. The miniatures are being worked on at the factory. Getting we're, all the, we're proofing all of the digital files. Um, yeah, all the art's mostly done. There's a couple pieces we're still waiting on, but it's it's really coming together. It's looking great. Um, and in your, it's, your it's our it's our superhero themed game. Yes, it's, yeah. um, using the modular deck system as well. A fully um, original uh, setting with uh, original original heroes, and I would say it's our best offering uh, for the MDS category right now. It's, um, well, it's it's probably the design that I'm personally most proud of. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I, I love superheroes and everything, but as a design, I think it's more, it's just an evolution of, of how, things we learn and take away from each design we've done within the modular deck system, which we'll talk about more in the next, uh, next quick, part of this. Quicker week. playing was the big one. Yeah. It, it plays quicker. Yeah. Um, and so we're very excited about that one. Can't wait to get it out there. Um, there was another question here, and this pro this is probably another thing we'll address more in the future of um, Blacklist Games stream. But of the Contra have any hero add-ons? Contra is actually not going to be a, a Kickstarter; it's going to be just a, um, a retail uh, straight to retail release. We have pre-orders up. Um, well, but we will have them. Up we today. will have pre-orders up today, um, but it will have um, it. it it is the type of game where we can, can do additional expansions for. It just all depends on the performance of it and you know licensing and everything. So. But that's all. And also, and it, it, that one is also another quick playing MDS game. Um, then uh, that moves us up to after Hour of Need, we did um, Blacklist Miniatures Fantasy Series One. So that was the first uh, project in our Blacklist Miniatures line, which is going to be it very did very it did very well on Kickstarter. It was very successful, and because of that, it's kind of gonna, going to alter the way we do our games in the future, which we will talk about on Saturday. Um, so again, join us on Saturday for the future of Blacklist games. But the Fantasy Series 1 Kickstarter unlocked tons and tons of miniatures. Um, it was just a miniatures Kickstarter. There was no game. Um, however, it did inspire us to want to do a game with those miniatures, um, which we talked about on the Kickstarter. But that um, that one did really well. Um, that one's moving along the production as well, uh, getting all the sculpts done. It's moving along very well. It's set to deliver at the end of the year. Hopefully it does. Um, but we will definitely keep people updated on the Kickstarter about that. Uh, unfortunately, late pledges have just closed. Those are no longer available. Um, but that's kind of where we are, caught up to where we are with projects, things we've done, um, things you might see from us. Um, and we also wanted to take this take time during this stream to talk more about the modular deck system, what it Which is. Someone that just asked, actually, um, can you tell us how you get up with the MDS? What did spark the idea? Um, and uh, we'll get into that right now. Other, other question here is, or not question, but comment here. I want to uh, bring up a really sad that hour we did so bad compared to the other ones. Um, yeah, we, we, we acknowledge that it didn't fund as well as our other projects, and I think it was a lot of the timing circumstances because <laughs> when we were planning that, we had no idea that Marvel <laughs> Champions from FFG was launching, and that was a big splash as far as like superhero games go the market so and the um, characters everybody's familiar with everybody yeah, loves yeah. their marvel characters nobody knows the but, character we made up for our need yeah so but we then, do feel like when that game is released um uh, we're gonna try as hard as we can that it to make it get the attention it deserves because i like i said i'm very very proud of it and i have hopes for the future of it i'd love to do more stuff with it so and the upside is there even though it didn't fund as well as our other kickstarters there's a lot of content in there yeah, there's yeah. a there's four games there's the there's the base game and then three standalone expansions. So there's a lot of content right out of the gate. Um, I'm pretty sure when people get it, they will see how how cool it is, how fun yeah. it is, and I think we'll, it'll open the door to us do more more content in the future for that game line. Yeah, and we're going to talk more about our need on Saturday as well, kind of showing some of the graphics and uh, cards and stuff you can see in the game um, because that's kind of part of our future of Blacklist uh, chat. So um, going into uh, another topic we're going to discuss was just the MDS in general, the modular deck system, which you'll see a logo on many of our boxes that say an MDS game. Um, and we wanted to kind of, to kind of take this time to just 
um, kind of spell out what that means to us um, and what we were hoping to achieve by creating that branding. Um, ju just to kind of start off the discussion, um, what the MDS is not, the MDS is not a set of mechanics. It's not a board game system. The modular deck system is more of a system in the in the sense of a let's say a video game system is a system like the Nintendo, Nintendo Entertainment System is a system you enjoy games with in a format you're familiar with. You pop a, a game in and and before you even get into oh, what this, it yeah, is, let me describe. Yeah. Well, before you even get into that, we want we want to take this time to, to mention that uh, we're not even remotely suggesting we invented this concept right, of right. modular this decks. Like this is something we played. Uh, before even to Street Master, we played it with games like Sentinels of the Multiverse, where they had these decks that you could mix and match of these different heroes versus villains. That and definitely and inspired us to want to do more with that yeah. kind of uh, structure of a game. So we just put a name on it, so we could just refer to it. This is this is this type of game where you're using modular decks to create this game experience. Yeah, and I'll come back to the Nintendo analogy in a second, but I also want to go off of that because honestly, um, a lot of people have the assumption that, you know, they see Street Masters and it, it has the similarities of like Sentinels and Multiverse or something like that. But honestly, where I kind of fell in love with the idea of these fixed decks was uh, kind of an obscure area. The Tal uh, not Talisman, um, Runebound, second edition by FFG, they had these character class decks you could buy. So you'd have your hero you play as, but you could buy separate expansions, which are these class decks. And it was just an independent deck and it was fixed and you just had abilities you could do. You'd draw decks, you would draw cards in the deck and do different things. I just fell in love with that concept. So I've always had this affinity for just personalized decks. So that's kind of where, that's where my attachment came um, to Sentinels when I played that, Sentinels of the Multiverse. And that kind of more inspired how we developed the whole MDS concept. So it, the MDS is a uh, shorthand for just fixed decks that you can combine in different ways. And we wanted that to be a system across many of our games. We'll obviously do non-MDS games uh, in the Blacklist catalog, but our MDS games will usually feature you know, fixed decks, mostly dice, um, dice uh, resolution for combat and, and actions and stuff like that. We love dice. Um, and getting back to that whole video game analogy I was talking about, I always imagined the, the word system being just a format in which you enjoy different thematic games you want to to consume but in a familiar way so it's not the same set of mechanics but there are enough borrowed ideas that you're there's enough familiar ground to learn from so for example in street masters you have these this punch kick and grapple defense system to represent um, martial arts um, in brook city we kind of use that similar idea but we use it with hunches where you get hunches when you're investigating and you spin those to to do better at things you want to do because you've learned things by solving different yeah different we also did the whole the three different type thing where we did you know reckless normal and uh, cautious approaches things like that we definitely borrow elements from games but we try to make them different experiences um our existing mds games definitely share some similarities in gameplay um i feel like they create different experiences and they some of them play drastically different than others. Um, for example, you know, Alter Quest plays drastically different than Hour of Need. Um, but there are some sim familiar concepts where you don't need to explain those because you, you're familiar with the other game. You can kind of use that knowledge to you know learn how to play other the other version other games in our catalog. Um, but yeah, all that being said, the the MDS is never. A, a sign that oh I know how this game plays you know we, we want to branch out even in the future when you do new MDS games where they might play completely differently from anything we've ever done before but they just have that modular deck element to the to the product um, so that's kind of the, the tag we wanted to use like this is this is you know this game is going to have decks that you can mix and match that's kind of what we would go for yeah yeah and and it's not stated in the definition of MDS that you're going to have miniatures and dice and and uh, exploding dice, but it's kind of this assumed thing because we we want to have that familiarity between these games, where it's it's enough familiarity, but enough new new content also and new new mechanical hooks uh, because these are all different games. Um, because of this discussion also came up with Contra, because Contra is an MDS game, and someone asked, is this just like a rethemed Street Masters? And I can see from a zoomed out standpoint why someone would have that question but considering when we designed that contra we sat down and it was like just 
starting from scratch, starting a, a game from scratch. But we knew we wanted to have fixed decks for commandos because I like the resource system it provided. So that was a thing that kind of what we borrowed, and, and that's an MDS quality. But we also thought exploding dice was appropriate for Contra because it's you know mayhem. All, anything can happen. You can if you're taking a, a hard shot at an enemy, there's a chance you might get it. So um, we just wanted to have um, the excitement that that provides. So a lot of these things get borrowed and reused in different ways and reimplemented. But it's always from a we always design from the ground up. We don't just take street masters and then retool things and make it work so there is borrowing and there is uh the co coherency among the games especially with the cards and the card driven um nature of the games but um it's just it's 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 a system in the sense that it's a an, an umbrella of familiarity as opposed to like like a mechanic, like a single mechanic. Because if you have a deck building game, deck building works one way. You know, you build a deck, and there's all kinds of things you can do with deck building games. But you know that mechanic. The MDS is not a mechanic because there's no single way to resolve these things. Yeah, I, a couple comments I just wanted to to comment on myself. Um, someone asked, arrived and said they want to know if there was some talk about delivery days for Alter Quest. Um, nothing hard yet because we're still waiting for uh, Quartermaster to pick up the product um so we're kind of we're organizing that with them this week but we'll definitely post an update on the uh, ultra quest kickstarter with details when that when we have more information solid information to share um yes i hope there are all, we also hope there'll be another kickstarter in the future for our need um we're hoping it's kind of like street masters where street master did pretty well on the first kickstarter when it when it hit the streets when people got it uh the reviews went out people really loved it and so the aftershock kickstarter did like three times as better or something like mm -hmm. that so we have, we're optimistic that when our need is in people's hands and word gets out that this is a really fun little game, we might do we could do another Kickstarter and kind of. Someone said I think Dr. Banajek said aftershock, our need confirmed. Uh, maybe not that big a box, but <laughs> we definitely want to do a follow up in the future. Um, yeah, yeah, I think um, there's a lot I would want to do with the characters too because we we spend a lot of time. Um, you you obviously didn't see it as much because we have to plan so far out in advance uh, just in case things go out of control during Kickstarter. So we have a lot of characters planned, and we even have artwork done for some characters. So we have heroes and villains planned out. I'd love to use, um, and even if it's a different game, if if if, if uh, Hour of Need hits and it's well received and it lets us do other games with those characters, that'd be amazing. So I I would you know imagine like a cool like you know not in the dungeon crawl, but more of a zoomed in like you know superhero going into bad guy layers and stuff like that it'd be really fun so um i would love to explore that world more um and i just hope the game hits well and people people respond to it as well as i have when we were playtesting it i loved it so um someone asked had a question about the mds discussion gonna talk about having them cross over and i think that's kind of what we're getting at where the games are so different even even subtle differences that make it so they just they're not compatible with each other um concepts can be carried over from one to the other but we want to keep the games distinct, so there's probably not going to be any crossover between existing game lines like this. Um, but we do have plans in the future, uh, which we'll talk about on Saturday, for games that will have a set system in the different settings that are intended to be, you know, yeah, socketed together. Intend to be anachronistic, meaning it can go across any themes. Yeah. So that that's the, that's yeah, we'll get into that in detail. Um, uh, is that tomorrow? It's Saturday. Saturday. So tomorrow Thursday. is going to be all Alter Quest stuff. So. I'm glad you're enjoying the Street Masters app. Uh, I've gotten a lot of texts today, people saying they can't put it down. And it's funny because when, uh, when he started uh, the development process for the app, um, our developer, Tim, he would always send us the beta invites. And I would just hop in the app to see how the new features are working. But then, you know, I'd be stuck playing a whole game every time I do it because it's, it's, it's really addicting. So, um, Someone was asking about the uh, Contra pre-orders when those go live. Those should be, the pre order should be going up this afternoon. Um, I mean, it could be any any time now but i think that uh, uh our brand manager scotty was going to be reviewing the pre-order page to make sure all the information was correct and um before hitting the launch button so i think we're just reviewing final details before we, we launch it so um that's kind of where that is and contra is our first uh game that we're putting out that's not on a kickstarter um it's also our first licensed product with blacklist games so it's been an interesting uh experience and obviously it's been a long one because we announced we teased this 
probably two Gen Cons ago. Yeah, um, it's been something like that. So yeah, the actual design's been done. I, I want to say almost at least a year and a half. The, yeah, the, the, the nice thing about the extra time though is that um, Scotty got Scotty got in, Scotty Mc, Scott McFall. We call him Scotty. Yeah, got Scotty involved in the development of the game. Kind of took took over um, while we were working on other things, and you know did more play testing and, and tweaking some things and adding some cool little elements to the game. So he really took it up uh, took it upon himself because he loves Contra. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and those who are unfamiliar with how. Um, nor like kind of typical board game uh, development processes go. You'll usually have the design, um, which you know, depending on your creative um, acumen, um, some people say it's the hardest part is, is the design, is getting that hook done and, and actually building something from nothing and get it, get it to be a functioning system. And they hand it over to the developer. And the developer takes that that system, refines anything, and iterates like crazy. Make sure the playtesting gets done and everything. So a lot of these games, we had to do all of that process ourselves. Um, we'd have to do the design, the development, every step of that way. And a lot of people do that, and, and they're really good at it. Um, I think my personal weakest point is the development process. So Scotty really, he took a lot of ownership on Contra, and it'll show. You'll you'll see it when you see the final product. He did a fantastic job. But it's also you can you'll be able to feel our three mutual um, kind of uh, passion for, for, for how, we, how we grew up playing that game, you know, like the Contra game. So we knew the, what, the feelings we wanted to evoke um, on the tabletop, not just simulating a cardboard version of button mashing, you know. But so, so you'll, I'm anxious to see how people respond to this game because um, when, when I play it, I, I can just feel the, uh, the kind of the spirit of the Contra franchise in it. Yeah, that's kind of an interesting discussion in itself. Um, a lot of people, when they see a board game adaptation for like a video game, they ask the question like, oh, how, how can you faithfully represent a video game on a board game? And we have no interest in doing that. We don't, we yeah, do that's not. never my goal. <laughs> I mean, Contra is literally moving around, pressing two buttons, you know, dodging bullets, you know. It's like, I don't want that in a, in a tabletop game. That's my video game. <laughs> yeah, so you, you could buy like a toy uh, thing where it's like some you know some scenic moving view of the pixelated contra figures moving on it but like i would never like get excited about a board game ver like version trying to simulate that because it's it's purely dexterity on a, on a you know on a system on a console you're playing you're just responding to things so what i what i like to think of is, is playing to the strength of the medium and um, at least, obviously, for us, um, I love card play, so like that was always an obvious thing. I thought it'd be cool to abstract a lot of those dexterous elements of a platforming game into managing resources of certain types, so you can do the things you want to do, but be prepared to respond to things that might be, you know, uh, 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 might happen in, in, in uh, reaction to what you're doing from the enemy side of things. So, um, so yeah, it's never a goal to simulate for me, at least, um, unless you're you know, developing a tactical adaptation of a tactical video game. but um. Yeah, like, like for example, if, if we did a, an XCOM board game, that might be a little easier to yeah, just, just yeah. faithfully represent because make cardboard that video game <laughs> is a board game. Like I think the designers of that video game actually designed it as a board game first and then programmed it into their video game. So, What's the Konami code? I keep hearing that. See, what happens when you put the Konami code in? Yeah, there? we'll, we'll <laughs> say that all of us grew up playing Contra. We've all... Uh, always, I think I don't think we've ever played Contra without the Konami code, even when we first started playing it. So we, I don't think we've ever we're not very, known about it. <laughs> yeah, we're very aware of it, and we'll leave it at that. <laughs> um, any plans to explore the design of Warhammer Quest adventure card game, or here is a Terranoth in a new form? Uh, I will just say absolutely. Like we've expressed our interest um, in that before. Where um, if FFG isn't going to continue that line or do anything with the game, they have so many products. They have big licenses like Star Wars and all this stuff. So, you know, I understand why if they don't decide not to expand a game like Heroes of Terranoth because it's not like a big... It's probably not the biggest moneymaker, obviously. But we feel like we could support that in the long run. So we would definitely be interested in doing something new with that game. And we've, we've definitely discussed it. Um, it's really just a matter of what we want to do with it and when. Um, but it is definitely on our minds. And I feel like we could do it pretty... We could do it justice. So we could We could improve that game even more, I think. So... So uh, we have a question here about our online store. Are you going to stock your online store going forward so expansions of base games can be easily purchased? Um, so yeah, obviously our goal is to have our um, web store stocked. Um, we've been stuck in a spot like the last you know year or so where we're just um, fulfilling Kickstarters and we're ordering enough to fulfill those, but there isn't always enough to reserve to stock. And it's also the conventions to deal with as well. So as we catch up, 
you know, the more you know, the more time we have to catch up, we'll be able to start stocking the store. So, so short answer, yes. Whenever we have the excess stock, it'll be going to our web store. I, um, I feel like people will see a difference in our inventory availability after Alter Quest fulfills. We're using Quartermaster for the first time with Alter Quest. This is our first uh, project with them. We have very high hopes with them. Um, they have great reputation. Uh, working with them so far has been great. Great communication. They uh, are good about updating their Twitter and stuff, telling their telling people what they're working on, what they're delivering, keeping backers updated with progress, um, status progress, and everything. So we, we're very optimistic about our inventory being more available in the future using Quartermaster because um, we're unless something changes, we're going to be using them with our future projects. So we've always had an issue with inventory. We don't, we just don't have access to our inventory. Uh, any inventory we do have is caught up in Kickstarter fulfillment or you know like QA stuff like that. Um, but we definitely feel like uh, with after UltraQuest fulfills, um, we'll be able to get the up online store like in operation the way it should be. So, um, and I think uh, and correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, this is just my assumption. I think you might have touched on this, but Sebastian asked um, for the question on the online store. Will you have inventory in the EU to lessen shipping costs? I believe. I believe that Quartermaster. Is all Quartermaster. So, well, we're not going to verify that, but I'm pretty sure that that well, we is can't the verify. Case. We can't. We can't. We can't make say that affirmatively right now. Yes. But we'll we'll try to verify. Well, I will verify. <laughs> I don't want to say anything that's not true right now. But my assumption is that Quartermaster has uh, regional hubs all over the world um, to make fulfill like shipping more affordable for everybody in the way, you know, no matter where you are. I keep so. staring at this, and it's just, it's ridiculous. Um, and um, most of you are probably familiar with this, those of you who back Street Masters, but, like, on the back here, we have, this is the bottom of the Aftershock box, we have all these fighters listed out, and then all the enemy factions and all these stages, and there's 30 stages here, and designing those stages was just not, not... Yeah, walk in the park. <laughs> it's so much content, though. Yeah, all this these, all, all these pictures, all these pictures you see back here, these icons, those all have unique decks tied to them. They all play differently <laughs> and function differently. So, uh, it's a big game. It's it's like a it's like it's a mixture of like pride seeing this, but also like just almost like uh, bitterness. Like, oh god, so many cards. <laughs> I had to, I did, had to agonize over those for so long. <laughs> but it's an impressive roster, that's for sure. So, was there anything else we want to talk about with the modular deck system? Because that was, I um, think it's one of the hottest topics for, for us as companies. I'd like to, I'd like to summarize, because I, I, I know I've rambled a bit. Um, I think the, the, the summary is, what is the MDS? And uh, I want to just make it clear, the MDS is, is a shorthand we wanted to provide, just a, a anchor for people to understand that, that, that an MDS game is going to have cards that are in fixed decks that you can mix and match to create your own in like scenarios, essentially. Um, typically, we'll have a thematic setting. That's the goal because we tend to do thematic games. Um, it'll have cooperation because, I mean, not to say we won't do non-cooperative MDS games, but all, right now all of our MDS games are cooperative experiences and solo-friendly experiences, and uh, usually dice with uh, interesting mitigation uh, resources involved, not just a luck fest. You know, interesting dice mechanics. So, in in uh, a perfect world. MDS would be fully understood as a a format in which a product's presented, which a game's presented, and it's not a set of mechanics that are just borrowed from each game to game. They're just rethemed games because every system works in its own way. There's just familiar anchors there to remind you of oh this these cards operate this way, and it's just different from a game to game. Yes, and um, we I think all all the games so far the Blacklist Games has published have been modular deck system games um we've kind of just been in the groove with this design having new ideas constantly and we just like, and we just like playing in that sys that kind of and, format and part of that is we try to listen we try to respond to um the i guess the most vocal fans so we, we also reach out and see what what fans want and a lot of it is usually we we just get a lot of requests for different types of mds games so that's been kind of a reactionary thing so there are some you know we'll still go over this on saturday there's some other plans in the works 
So we're not yes, we're we, not we, just an MDS company. Yes, we do want to do an MD. Uh, this is one I hear all the time. We would definitely want to do an MDS sci-fi game. That's something I keep talking about. So that is definitely something I want to do. Yeah, um, Doctor Bandage said it great. MDS is a genre, not a mechanic, and that's kind of what I want to get at. Doctor Bandage it's, gets us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so it's 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 much more of a format than it is a single a single thing. Because deck building, I wouldn't consider a genre. Deck building is a mechanic. Um, but if you say this game has deck building, then people know, well, I know how to resolve that part of the game. So what else is involved in the game? I know how to deck build. That's kind of how I want it to feel where it's, if someone knows that the MDS is a format in which the game's presented, okay, so how's this how's this MDS game different than the other MDS game I've played? Because there's going to be differences. Um, this is something we're going to get into probably pretty deep tomorrow, but this is someone's asking if the, uh, look at the pantheon of epic dungeon crawlers, how do you, um, how do you view Alter Quest in comparison with Hero Quest, Warhammer Quest, Descent, stuff like that? Um, I would say one of the main differences is, is the crunchiness of the card play. Like there are so many decisions to make in your turn about how you want to resolve your turn. It's really about optimizing your actions and making sure you do as much as you can in your turn as you possibly can because you can use cards you can use feet cards, you can do actions, you can use alter dice to do special effects. Um, people ask us, you know, about like, oh, how come you keep one-shotting all the monsters in the room? Well, we play the game where we try to optimize our turn to make sure the enemies do not act back on us. Because when the enemies hit you in that in alter quest, they can hit you pretty hard. Um, you can die quickly in the game. Yeah, you don't <laughs> so have a lot of health. Yeah, yeah you, it's like all about optimizing your turn. So I would say it's probably a little more, a little crunchier. And a lot of other dungeon crawlers. Um, yeah, and I think I think a lot of uh, a lot of it comes down to also uh, we've played a lot of dungeon crawlers, and there's a lot out there where you don't have a ton of choices on your turn. Like you'll you can decide where you want to move, what you want to hit, um, but mostly it's confined to those decisions, and that's good for a lot of people. A lot of people prefer that, which is fine. But we wanted to provide something more where we have a plethora of of tactical options, strategic options. There might be because, too much in Alter Quest. Yeah, we yeah. might so, have given people too many options. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I won't I won't put this in a negative light because we obviously we love Alter Quest. We play it. We have fun with it. Um, but I think like that is probably the pinnacle of our kind of more baroque designs, where it's it's like we we kind of wanted to like do. We did as much as we could in this game, and and I think you know a lot of other games we we scale back and we focus on certain individual things. This one we wanted everything in there, so it is there is much more to do. There's much more, many more choices to make, and some people might freeze up under that, and they might have to get used to the. the it the might be it options, might be overwhelming but, to some new players yeah. with all the options you have in the game, and it definitely inspired us to after we did Alter Quest. I think we just got kind of like brain dead about you know just burning our brains at the design because there's so many there's so many things to consider in the game yeah a lot of, a lot kind of moving of, parts a lot of juggling modularity and stuff i think that's why our need turned to such a drastic turn to be quick quicker playing um you know faster resolution about things so they're very different games that's another uh reflection of the mds being vastly different between the, the different games um there's actually something common here someone said they recently found out that we that we worked on uh journeys in the dark second edition um, that's actually was my first big design, uh, when I was at FFG. Brady got a job at FFG before I did. He was in marketing and, um, I was finishing up my last year of college, uh, because I went to college late. Um, but, uh, there was a job opening for a game producer at FFG that I applied for. I didn't get it. Um, and I was really depressed. Uh, I forgot the key element, though. I got the job at FFG because I was writing uh, for Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, which at that time I was doing it freelance just as a kind of a side gig when I was working my full-time job as a cook in a dormitory kitchen <laughs> at my old college. But I, that was like the pinnacle for me at the time. I was working, I'm like, I'm writing in old world Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay. Like, what can't get better than this? You know, that was like the pinnacle for me, and it's all spiraled from there. So, go ahead. Yeah, and the funny thing was the reason we knew about FFG was because I saw Descent, uh, the first edition, that huge box in the game store one time, and it reminded me of Hero Quest. So I grabbed it. So I was I was a fan of Descent when I got a job at F or I didn't get the job at first, but a few months, a few like weeks later, I got a call saying, "Hey, someone left. Do you want to do you want that job?" I was like, "Yes, I'll take that job." So I was working at FFG as a game producer. And I saw a Descent second edition on the schedule, and I was telling my boss, I have to work on that because I love Descent. Um, well, it turns out I ended up being put on it as the designer because there wasn't a designer available at the time. So I got to design second edition. So it was very uh, overwhelming, intimidating uh, process for my first main, you know, first game design. Uh, but I learned a lot, and it turned out to be a pretty cool product. People like it. Um, someone said they were a Descent fan. So Yeah, uh, someone else here asked. <laughs> it's funny. Someone said... Uh, um, did you see the tease for Descent last night on the FF? So it's yeah, funny because Adam and I, uh, 
we were at FFG, I think, in the fall because we were working on a game with them. But we got to see that be- way before it was announced. But we obviously we can't talk about anything we saw because it's, it's probably you know, totally it's, it's probably totally different by now. Yeah, way, it could but, be a totally different game. But yeah, we we've been waiting for a while from the announcement, I, so it's pretty exciting. There, they at least I thought, tease it. <laughs> I thought the tease was well done, Chris. Chris did a good yeah, job. Yeah, Chris is <laughs> Chris is a great dude. Um, so yeah, yeah so uh, that that kind of was pretty much what got me into game design professionally after that um getting my name on a box i could actually point to something and say yeah i, I worked on that game um so that was really cool uh, I, I might be wrong on this but will contra be available in europe I, it's it's i'm assume i'm pretty global, sure I'll, yeah. I'll let scotty confirm yeah, that yeah. but uh, i think he answered that the they'll, they'll be up pretty soon so that it'll say on the pre-orders um i'm pretty sure it's worldwide yeah. but uh, sorry we're not logistics guys we're just the lovely designers <laughs> so <laughs> um uh, what was the inspiration for the Alter Quest setting. Um, so I have a bad habit of just constant. I have like these little like notebooks. Like I have one, this is like a kind of a bigger one, but I have these moleskin notebooks, the smaller ones. And I have just a, a dozen of them just filled up with just different settings I've been creating. And because I constantly am working on ideas for novels, I'm working on a new one now. But um, the idea for Alter Quest began earlier on because Adam and I were tinkering around with a kind of like an RPG skirmish game. Um, and the seeds of Alter Quest was the setting for that. So I just, I, I had a lot of notes about that, like the world that was coming together. Um, it was a, it was kind of a different take because it wasn't all just classical fantasy. It had some, some kind of more Gothic horror inspirations behind it and everything. So I kind of want to just expand on it. So that was kind of like the, the initial start of, um, of Alter Quest. And I think as far as like inspirations go from other things, um, I, I, I mean, I love, I love GW's old world. Um, but that's much more like the a gritty uh, version of Tolkien's, uh, you know, t- typical fantasy, which I love, obviously. But um, this is a little different than that, obviously. So I, it was more of a, it started off more of a horror setting. Yeah, like, and we were a little torn horror. too. This when we were decided to do a fantasy setting, do we want to do something more like kind of different or just traditional, you know, orcs, like the Adine. orcs and elves like that? So it was very close to just going that direction typical orcs and elves stuff like that just because people are familiar with that um, and and i will say that's that's how most of the world is in alter quest we focus on a certain region this region has a lot of different like un un tip uh, un, atypical um dnd type characters but this world it's set in a world where it has cuz this was a kind of a piece of a dnd campaign that was planned um, while ago, and it's just like a certain continent on a, a world that's pretty much otherwise all just traditional fantasy. But we decided to focus on this continent specifically, just to be a little, a little more unique, I guess, a little different. Uh, yes, that that skirmish concept is slowly evolving into lasting tales. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of what we we have. We always have dozens of little projects that we have to set back at the side while we're doing, you know, our commissioned work, but. That's a, one that we want to we want to just massage more and make it into a final thing. It's one of the biggest challenges of our our current jobs now because we're kind of uh, becoming more about more in charge of product development at the company as opposed to just game design. So we kind of decide which which products we want to focus on, uh, which ones are on the schedule as opposed to which ones are that are inspiring us. It's very difficult to, to to nail down what should we work on right now. What should we plan for? <laughs> um, any chance of working with Games Workshop in the future with Blacklist? <sighs> <Boy>. <laughs> um, <laughs> Unfortunately, GW is to a point now where, like, when it comes to tabletop stuff, they're going to do everything themselves. Um, they, they I'm more than a, happy to let them just do because they're they're doing more old world stuff eventually. So I'm more than happy to let them do their if, magic. If they, if they do a new uh, Mordheim, I'll be good to go. Like, I'll I'll, I'll buy <laughs> everything. Quest, they have yeah, or Warm Quest even. Like, they'd have to do really, really like faithful adaptation of the original Warm Quest for me to be excited though. Like, I want that. Huge RPG book. That's that's kind of what I want. Um, so someone asked here. Um, oh, it's uh, I, I, I'm gonna butcher the name. Tuan, Tuan? is it? Yeah, pronounce that. I'm not gonna Tuan. try. <laughs> <laughs> um, but hey, how's it going? Um, the uh, which one of your games would you say you're most proud of? For me, it's probably a really close tie. Like I think I think Hour of Need is probably it, but Contra is very close because Contra has a lot of similar. Um, elegant touches that we put into hour of need but i think hour of need is is still from everything we've ever done i think that's probably the the, the high point of um our design career so thus far 
Um, I'm just very, very proud of it. I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I was going to say Hour of Need because of the, what the culmination of what we've been working on, but I might just actually go with uh, Warhammer Quest, the adventure card game, because that it's, was kind of like our first... It's still uh, really good. Our first co-design, and I, it's, a, it's a nice little game. It's like a you know, $35 game. There's a lot of game in there for such, you know, not that many components. There's It's... Yeah. I, I still enjoy playing it, and I'm going to give a little runner up to um, oh, a, kind of an oddball in our in our catalog. It's uh, uh, Walking Dead No Sanctuary we did with Cryptozoic, um, and it, it suffered some you know some consequences from the licensing aspect because it's it's so many hoops and the you production have to go issues. Yeah, the production that but, tiny little uh, token. Yeah, the, yeah. <laughs> track token. But man, I, I'm really proud of the mechanics of that game. Um, I think that I think it was such a really, such a cool take on the whole zombie survival genre. So I wouldn't be surprised if we maybe someday retooled that whole concept into something our own for ourselves because I really enjoyed it. Yes, that new Warhammer 40k Vermintide. Uh, what's it called? Black Tide? Black uh, something or Dark I, Dark Tide? Dark Tide. Dark, dark, oh my, that looks yeah. awesome! I'm so excited about that. Um, I love Vermintide, but like putting in 40k, oh, I'm excited. Were you surprised um, with the success of Warhammer fan, with the with the Fantasy Series One? Um, yes and no. Yeah, we were, <laughs> it was kind of weird because it was like it could have been barely funded or it could have gone like five million, you know, because we could we couldn't tell based on all, all we could compare it to would be like the uh, like the Reaper Bones miniatures. That's kind of like that's kind of the only thing I could compare it to when I was planning that Kickstarter because we were just like, okay, well, let's do a line of miniatures. There's not a lot of companies out there that do a big box of plastic miniatures, you know, for a low price. So that's all I can compare it to, and and if you look at the Reaper Bones miniatures, those are all like three million every time. So we had no idea what to expect, and at the beginning of the campaign, it was kind of slow. So we were kind of, uh, oh no, this is gonna be this is gonna be worse than we thought. Um, but it picked up toward the end really fast, and you know we were very very happy with how it ended. Um, and it also opened the door to to the Blacklist miniatures uh, division of Black Blacklist Games. And that's something we'll talk about more on Saturday. Um, but yes, uh, I would say more surprised than not. I, I, I felt like it'd be popular because people always love fantasy miniatures, especially people who play D&D. They just want all kinds of different miniatures to represent different kinds of characters and in their stories. Um, so I'm a miniatures collector myself, so I always want different kinds of miniatures. So I, I would have backed it. Um, that's kind of my barometer for <laughs> the kind of things we put together. Yeah, and I'm um, not even a miniatures guy typically, but I, I'd be tempted to back it just because of the sheer you know value presented there and the promise of a game to use them for in the future because that's, that's something that we didn't expect off the bat but with the with the success of it, we're like i may as well just start really moving forward with the design of that game we wanted to do so we yeah. have another question here can you play alter quest as a single random dungeon crawl and that's exactly how Absolutely. it was designed that's that's initially, to, so. to me that's the ideal way to play yeah. um it's well, got campaign play it's story yeah. modes really cool but i i i think the game was designed to be Let's let's put it together a random quest and just play it. Yeah, um, yeah. Because because you get experience those those the, the modularity aspect a lot more. So the stories in the so you can also play campaigns the same way. You just play whatever quests you want, whatever order, and just kind of level up across the way. Um, playing story mode gives you the whole narrative experience as well. But um, but I personally am most excited about the encounters that they're that added in the Ruins of Arkenspire, and it turns it much more like a Street Master style game where it's more just a tactical little encounter. There's, you know, it's not really exploring and going through a dungeon, which is, you know, obviously the 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 main point of the dungeon crawl experience. But I, I really love the encounter thing. Yeah, but just that alone proves how flexible the system is. You yeah. know, you can do a big sprawling dungeon, or you can do a one tile encounter and using the same, pretty much the same game system. So, um, Fantasy Series One was our first was your first Kickstarter you pledged for. That's awesome. Yeah, that's one of the biggest benefits, um, I think, of the Fantasy Series 1 Kickstarter. Not only did it open the door to Blacklist Miniatures, but it also brought in a whole bunch of new people um, to see our company that wasn't familiar with our games, and maybe we have games they might like. Um, we, that, we, that's why we offered AlterQuest during the Kickstarter, because it lined up. It happened to line up where the production timing was uh, uh, pretty much allowing us to have people late pledge for it. But it also made sense because if you're a fan of fantasy miniatures, well, Alter Quest has a lot of fantasy miniatures, and they're also different than you might find other other places. If you want like pigmen or frogmen, we, we got those. <laughs> so, how does Alter Quest compare to Hero Quest and Warhammer Quest to make it different? It's uh, it's much different because in um, for example, let's say Hero Quest, um, it's that's a very linear. Um, kind of like RPG light style experience where you have a game master who has a preset story you're playing through and a preset 
you know, map you're playing through. Um, this is meant to give you a very replayable, very modular, um, very customizable experience. Um, so it'll still have that feel where you're going through dungeon, you're having combat, you're exploring, you're getting some exploration by drawing cards and getting little narrative bits about what you're seeing. But mostly, it's it provides so much more strat uh, strategic and tactical choices um, because you have all your cards in your hand, you have your, all your hero abilities. Um, there's just so much, so many things to juggle while you're playing that gives you just more options essentially. So um, they don't play this game doesn't play. Similarly, I think at all to either Warhammer Quest or Hero Quest, it just falls within that same genre because you're you're in a gridded space. You have you know you're moving through, exploring a dungeon and fighting, but the way you're resolving all those things is so much different. Yeah, Alter Quest really plays like a card game. I mean, it's if you imagine like uh, you know like the uh, Arkham Horror card game, you know like those LCGs that Def Fifty does. Um, it plays like a card game, but with the board and miniatures and everything like that. Positioning is very important. Um, but you're, you know, you're, there's a lot of card play, so it's it's very interesting. It's hard to compare it to other dungeon crawls. Um, I'm trying to think of some to compare it to, but I don't really. It just it's just pretty it's pretty unique for what it is. Um, yeah, yeah. I, that's why we designed it. Cause we, there wasn't a game that felt like that, so we were just we were kind of making the game that we thought we wanted to play in in that genre because it didn't. It yeah, happen. I feel like we, we could we could have just made. A uh, new, new version of Hero Quest or something, um, which we're not opposed to doing yeah. at some point. But I, if, if people want another fantasy dungeon crawl from us, we will consider it. But it, it would be competing with Alter Quest, which is strange. So. Um, any, uh, what do we have here? Oh yeah, it, for Alter Quest, are there more expansions planned in the future? Um, so we always have tentative ideas about what we, what we can do, um, but it all depends. We want to see the reception. We want to see how people yes. feel about it. We, we know people see. want it. We know that the demand from the Kickstarter is there, but we want to make sure that when it when it's in people's hands and they're playing it, that they want, they like it and they want more. Yeah. There is quite a bit of content on the way. You know, you got the base game, the Runes of Arkansas expansion, and the stretch goals probably have, I think it was like four or five, what we called adventure packs worth of stuff, um, which are like new enemies, heroes, threats, uh, features, alters, things like that. We kind of plan those as to be like little adventure packs if it was a retail product, but it's all in one big stretch goal box and it is pretty big. It's heavy. It's, it's heavy. Yeah. It's a big box. It's bigger. It's bigger than the base game. So, a lot of content. Have. Question here: Any chance of seeing some Brook City characters in the future? I want to know if poor old Lester Nelson ever gets out of, gets to retire happily. Um, so it's still up in the air right now. Um, we like we like a lot what we do with Brook City. Um, I've always wanted to do uh, different things with the game. Um, personally, I I mean this is from a design standpoint, not a product standpoint or a company statement. But I've always wanted to do like a second edition style of game like this because there are things we've done since then. Because this game was designed um, almost at the same time we designed this. They were pretty closely done. Uh, People that yeah. back to the Ultra Quest will see an ad for a game called Buddy Cop. Um, that is something that Mitch Schroeder designed for us, and it is a really cool, quick playing one to two player card game. So it was like really fitting for Buddy Cop setting. Um, not really sure when that's going to be coming out, but we also have uh, plans, like ideas for having that in various themes. Um, different, you know, a cool, quick playing little one to two, one to two player card game. Um, but that's what that ad is. Um, you will see it, and you might be wondering what it is. <laughs> um, did you get an important amount of new Ultra Quest orders from? So I'm guessing if you're asking if we got a, a significant amount of Ultra Quest uh, orders through the minis Kickstarter. I'm not sure of the numbers. We did we, not. I don't think we went. We didn't get close to going over our limited amount. Yeah. So I think you know, stock wise, we're fine. Um, I'm not sure what that, how much we'll have left over for the for the store or not. But Scotty's here. He just said uh, Contra pre-orders are up. Go get them. Yeah. Good timing, Scotty. Uh, that's a good that's a good thing to announce here on the live stream. If you're interested in uh, Contra, the board game, um, coming up next year, pre-orders are up on our website. Um, I'm sure there's a link on the uh, on our Facebook page as well. Scotty might throw one up in the comments. Um, but thanks for the update, Scotty. Doctor Bandage says you should collaborate with Restoration Games if you ever. Uh, going to do oh, trust me! I've made my interest so, very clear. <laughs> everybody, like I, I always joke with uh, Justin, who owns Restoration Games, because I've been bugging him for years. Hey, could you get Alter Hero Quest, please? Go and do it. So I've always just joked with them. So everybody, please go tell Restoration Games that you want them to do Hero Quest. You want us to help with, because <laughs> we would love to. <laughs> that was our. Uh, that was our kind of. Our, I don't even care if I just play test. I, I would love. Yeah, to be just just in to that, be like. <laughs> just to be kind of part of that process because that's that was the game that, that changed our whole trajectory in life so <laughs> we um, 
Um, have we talked about the secret character in Arkanspire? I don't we know there are, we oh, have what? only what? confirmed what? <laughs> there are secret boxes in the Ruins of Arkanspire expansion. We have not talked about what's in them, and we will let people post spoilers on BGG when they play through the Ruins of Arkanspire story and find out for themselves what's in there. So uh, we, oh yeah, uh, thanks for the Undaunted North Africa recommendation. Yeah, I, lo- I love that game. It's so good, David and uh, Trevor. Yeah, if you guys like Undaunted, players. join us on Saturday yes. as we talk about the future of Blacklist games. Um, so, uh, funny comment. I think Restoration Games has just got the license to, so no, uh, if you read up on their on the comments from Restoration Games, they constantly are getting uh, trademarks done as a um, first step in their process of looking for um, possible games to do so it doesn't mean they've actually acquired anything they do that as a they clearly step. they clearly want it yeah um, yeah they, they've, they've, because, they've made that clear before. yeah they've made it clear that they go after games that are highly requested and obviously hero quest is highly requested i just joke around a lot with them because i when i whenever i see it pop up i'm like hey let's do let's do hero quest you know because i keep nagging him even though we got our plates full at the moment <laughs> so. yeah i i would just be happy to see it um restoration games does great stuff um and if they got hero quest i would be all about whatever they want to do with it. Like I, would, I'd pre-order it. I'd play test it. Whatever they want. <laughs> so, are there retail plans for Street Masters um, Ultra Quest to Brook City? Uh, tentatively, um, we're still hammering stuff out. Uh, like I, like we said, um, Contra's our first straight to retail. So, that, depending on how that does, that'll open up a lot of doors for us um, for future products. Because um, we've always you know talked about just kind of you know spitballing ideas about doing you know let's do a street masters kind of starter set in like a smaller scale that could fit in like you know target and and, and also if we, if, and if we did do something with like for example the heroes of turn off game system if we did a game we, we that's a kind of game we would want to just put straight to retail it's a lower cost game not we don't want to like you know have tons and tons of stretch goals for it or a kickstarter so we'd rather just go straight to retail for something like that so that's an example of things we would like to do straight to retail Hero Quest is sort of in IP purgatory, but it's not something that it's because there was a, a RPG company that yeah, had a Hero well, Quest. I think Chaosium owns it because they had a an RPG system called Hero Quest, so they were like holding on to it. But it's it's nothing that can't be resolved, you know. And and the nice thing is Restoration Games, um, you know, Justin is a lawyer, so yeah, he, they, they he started do, that game. They do things right, so <laughs> that usually means it takes longer. Yeah. Um, so. But I'm not I'm not confirming any of that because this is all open information because uh, Justin's actually commented on this publicly on his on his Twitter and everything that um you, you know this is just part of the process they they did this early on uh, and for games that haven't even come out yet or haven't even been done they just do it as a preliminary step in case they can in the future so we'll see it's a good thing to just follow along you know do you consider do you consider to include legacy mechanisms in your games so we we kind of like for example with uh, Ruins of Arkanspire we have like boxes you open up that's the kind of legacy stuff I like things you kind of discover in the game I I'm I'm not really that uh excited about doing things like you know stickers or tearing up cards things like that like that that's cool i i really loved uh pandemic legacy se- season season, 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 zero. season zero looks awesome yeah by but the way. we played season one <laughs> and we played through it like in two days or something because we were just playing over lunch breaks and we just yeah, plowed so, through it <laughs> yeah so there's some things in games that we like to enjoy and consume but we don't necessarily want to make all the time so like we haven't had a for a firm enough desire to want to do a legacy uh style game um it's not off the table but it's just we there's so much we want to do with traditional games that we just haven't had the need to explore that territory. So it's it's a possibility, but we just haven't really moved forward with any of it yet. Um, Best hero aspect combo for champions. I, Cap- I go Captain America leadership. Well, I mean that's the yeah that's the pre build. I mean I go pre build yeah. pretty much everything. But I think my my favorite current hero has got to be um, Black Widow Justice. She's her her her. Well, actually, I, I take that back. Because Doctor Strange, like he's almost. He's, he, he almost feels, like, too good. So, like, I, I love playing as him because I love that character in the comics. But I think I enjoy Black Widow. She's a little more of a challenge on some of the scenarios. But um, I could go on Champions all day. So. I'll, just go, <laughs> I'll just go on a dream combo and I'll just say I want to play as Cyclops leadership. Um, uh, yeah, so. Iron Fist protection. <laughs> uh, if your request will hit Kickstarter, it will explode. Yeah, it would, yeah. No, uh, no question about yeah. that. Considering how well Dark Tower did, and I'd never even really heard of Dark Tower as a kid, but I definitely heard of Hero Quest. So, I think, like me, so many people got into gaming because of Hero Quest. Um, it's just it was a awesome little like gateway game. That it's a shame it's not around anymore because yeah. it's it's it was so good. It has a certain charm to it. So we're coming up on an hour here. I'm not sure if anybody had any more questions we could address because um, I feel like we should probably an hour is probably a good st- stopping point for the. Yeah, stream. I feel like the most of you here uh, now 
know us if you didn't before. I think most of you already knew. Mission accomplished. So, you know, <laughs> so we did our jobs here. So. so we wanted to do a little introduction, and then tomorrow, uh, at the same time tomorrow, we're going to do a, a gameplay overview of Alter Quest. We do have a live play up right now, like a recent live play of The Escape. I would suggest if you're interested, go watch that. I don't think we're going to do a whole live play tomorrow, but we're going to do like an overview talking about different aspects of the game and maybe going over over some decks and things like that, um, answering questions, obviously. And then on Saturday, we're going to be doing the future of Blacklist Games, um, talking about you know upcoming projects, things you do know about, like Hour of Need, kind of talking about where we are with that and, and just more details about it, but also teasing some stuff that we haven't talked about yet. So Iron Fist Tattoo, that's that's awesome. That's that's awesome. I was trying to make a Iron Fist like mask for my uh, Halloween costume this past year because my kids were going as superheroes and I couldn't get one down. But I love I love Iron. I was going through a big Iron Fist obsession about last year. <laughs> All right, so I think we're yeah. Unless anyone has any questions, we'll just go yep. ahead and call it there. Thank you for joining us. Hope you guys have a good rest of your first uh, Gen Con online day. Um, hope there's other exciting uh, live streams you're checking out. Um, let us know if you see anything cool. Um, but we, otherwise, we will see you at, tomorrow at 1 p.m. So one more question. Last sure. question. Would an encounter fit in the Alter Quest video schedule? Maybe like show it? or Oh, we'll, show, we'll definitely show it. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it. But we'll definitely do an encounter playthrough um, very soon. Like we'll, we'll make that a priority. So, um, but yeah, thanks again for joining us. Thanks for the questions. And we hope to see you all tomorrow while we talk purely about AlterQuest. Thanks for joining us. See ya.